Hello, everyone. Welcome. And I'd like to give you an overview of Project Team Problem Solving Barriers to Full Participation. And before we get started, we'd like to acknowledge our funders. Transition is a critical period of development. In the United States, there's an impending change in service delivery systems where IDEA uh, it ensures that accommodations and access to education is the responsibility of the school and the educator to the Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA, whereby there are rights to access and inclusion. However, those um, accommodations have to be usually identified and requested by the individual with a disability. So youth are not prepared to advocate for their needs under the ADA. Project team uses this rights-based approach to um, challenging the common approach to thinking about disability and participation. People may assume that difficulties doing activities at school, work, and community may be due to physical, sensory, or cognitive impairments. However, project team adopts an environmental approach to thinking about the interaction between disability and participation as aligned with the ICF. Difficulties doing school activities at school, work, and the community are a direct result of environmental barriers. And we can turn that on its head and turn those environmental barriers into environmental supports. And that's what Project Team is striving to empower youth and young adults with disabilities to do. Project Team will prepare youth with disabilities to systematically identify environmental barriers and supports, generate modification strategies, and request reasonable accommodations to increase participation at school, work, and the community. Project team is universally designed and from the ground up was developed in partnership with a team of young adults with a range of disabilities. Project team is a multi-component intervention. It consists of three parts. The first, the 12 week intervention consists of a group curriculum. This manual driven curriculum um, includes eight modules, which I'll review in a few slides. The second component is peer mentoring. These peer mentoring sessions are held by another young adult with a disability, preferably someone who's familiar with and who has completed project team in the past. And these young adults, this can happen um, on the phone or through video web conferencing and also uh, practice the concepts introduced in the group curriculum. And the third component is a community-based trip where with support from the peer mentor and the project team facilitator, young adults who are completing project team practice applying those concepts in the community. And all of these components are centered around an individual's personal participation goal. Project team teaches a problem solving process to identify and resolve these environmental barriers called the game plan. The game plan is an evidence based metacognitive approach. That means it teaches you to think about the way that you're thinking. It uses a goal plan do check uh, strategy, which is a common strategy used across many interventions. And each step has a self-talk question that helps you think about your problem solving and decide the best way to move forward to reach your participation goal. The great thing about the game plan is it can be used for any participation goal. And it incorporates that disability rights perspective where it's focused on removing those environmental barriers and embeds disability rights that give a young adult the right to ask for changes in their environment. So let's quickly review the game plan. The first step of the game plan is first base goal. And we ask ourselves the question, what activity would I like to do? All of the questions in the game plan are associated with movements and symbols to help us remember and be able to use the game plan, even if the facilitator and our peer mentor are not there to help us. So for goal, we see a symbol with a bullseye. Also on the screen, you'll see a beta version of our game plan app. 
in the game plan app, it actually suggests some goals that you might want to try, but you can always think of your own activity that you would like to do. The next step of the game plan is second base plan step one. And we ask the question, what parts of the environment help me or make it hard for me? And we see we have that thumbs up and thumbs down symbol. We systematically go through 11 parts of the environment. For example, things, technology, light, sound, and smell, people, and rules. These parts of the environment can act as both barriers and supports. The next step of the game plan is plan step two. And we ask the question, what strategy can I use to change the environment? There are six strategies that someone can use to change the environment. Plan ahead, change spaces, change the rules, ask someone for help, use technology or things, and teach others about my abilities and needs. We finally get to third base do, where we ask ourselves the question, who do I talk to about making this change? In this step, there is an embedded advocating for change script that pulls together, if you're using the app, all the information that you've entered and it creates an automatic script that you can edit. In this step, we incorporate the disability rights laws that give us the right to ask for a change in our environment so that we can be fully included in the activities that are important to us. And the last step of the game plan is home base, check. Can I do this activity now? If we're still unable to do the activity, then we can be uh, reminded to either try a different strategy or to try and remove a different environmental barrier. So we wanted to know the effective project team on participation goal attainment as well as knowledge and problem solving about environmental barriers and strategies to resolve those barriers, self-determination and self-efficacy. So we did a research design where we had two groups of people. One person did, one group did project team and the other group just worked on a goal but without doing project team. In the project team group, we had 47 people and in the goal setting group, we had 35 people. The groups were about the same age, had the same gender identities, and had about the same makeup of their race and ethnic identity backgrounds. However, the groups were different on their intellectual disability, where individuals in project team, more of them had uh, learning disabilities or intellectual disabilities. And here's what we found. We found that the differences between the two groups were significantly better for project team only on their knowledge of parts of the environment, strategies to change the environment, and disability rights laws. We also found differences between project team and the goal group on the attainment of all of their goals and their participation goals, even after project team ended. So what does this mean? This means that after project team was over, young adults who completed project team were more likely to achieve their goals even without the help of the facilitators and their peer mentors. We also saw, saw some changes within each group where individuals in project team had significant increases over time of knowledge, problem solving, and their feeling of self-determination as reported and observed by their parents. The individuals who were in that goal setting group only did have some changes, but not as many. They initially reported an increase in their own perception of their self-determination, and they did show some improvement in their problem solving, which makes sense because they were working on their goals. So what does this mean? In conclusion, project team had significantly better outcomes for youth's participation goal. And that's because those self-talk questions, that goal plan, do, check, game plan, problem solving process helps young adults remember that problem solving process and apply it in their everyday life. And interestingly, parents 
who of youth in project teams were the only ones to report observed changes in the self-determination that they observed young adults to have in other areas of their life after project team. If you'd like to learn more about project team evidence, there are several uh, uh, articles that you can get and project team is freely available to all people who are interested in seeing the full curriculum. Please visit our, uh, our website or email us for more information. And finally, thank you today for coming to the CP Achieve webinar. Please email uh, CP Achieve if you would like to acquire more about any of the following information in today's podcast, past podcasts, or future podcasts. And be sure to follow CP Achieve on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at CP Achieve.